Jishmataji. Good morning, everyone. Let us now collectively bow down at the lotus feet of Shimadaji. Place our Kundalini and take Bandhan. Let us take our right hand to the left out. Mother, please come in my heart. Please establish your lotus feet in my heart. Please take me in your meditation. Mother, please give me the required oneness. Take Akarita with you. Mother, I surrender. I surrender everything at your lotus feet. By your grace, I am the spirit, I am the spirit, I am the spirit. The attention towards Muladhar. Mother, please come in my Muladhar. Please strengthen my muladhar.
Mother of Ali, you are Sri Ganesha. Ganesha, please bless me with your power of innocence. Please kill all the negativities that is attacking and affecting my Mulada. Now slowly, slowly, the attention towards the right side, right channel, left hand towards the sky. Mother, I surrender. I surrender all the planning at your lotus feet. I 
all the futuristic ideas, thoughts. I surrender. You are the doer, you are the enjoyer. You are the responsibility in me. Mother, I surrender. Let us take Sri Anumana Mantra once. Om Tvabhi Vasaksham Sri Anumana Saksham Sri Adishakti Mataji Sri Nirvalam Devi Namo Namo Hey Shriyan Mana, please clear my right channel. Shri Guru Charan Sarojar Jag Nijamanu Mukuru Sudhari Baranau Raghu Bara Bimala Jasu Jodayaku Palachari Buddhi Hinatanu Janike
जन्म के 
Today we have come here to do Hanumana's Puja. Sri Hanumana is a great character in our being and he runs all the way from Swadhisthana to your brain and he supplies all the necessary guidance we need in our futuristic planning or in our <clears throat> mental activities. He gives us guidance and protection. As you know that Germany is a place where People are very active, very right-sided, use their brain too much and they are very machine-oriented also. It is very surprising how a deity like Sri Anumana, who is an eternal child, because he was like a monkey, his head was that of a monkey, if not of an elephant. So he was an eternal child and he was the one who was used to run the right side of human beings. He was told that you must control the sun to begin with. He has to control the sun, that the sun in the people, if there is too much sun then he must try to control it and make it uh, cooler or smoother. So he was a child after all. So as soon he was born, when he knew that he has to look after the sun, he said, why not eat it off? So he went, ran up the Virata's body and ate up the Surya. <laughs> there he had to be told, no, 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 you have to control him. You don't have to put him inside your stomach because he thought that this son will be controlled better if he has it in his own stomach. So the beauty of his character is that he's a child and the child 
like behavior of Sri Hanumana has to control the right side. If there's a right-sided mother or a right-sided father. Normally right-sided people don't get children, normally. They're over right-sided, then even they get children but they're really not liked by the children because they have no time for children, they all the time are very strict with the children, they shout them, shout at them, they don't know how to handle the children. Or they are over-indulgent because they always think that I never got this so let me give it to the child. So these extreme type of people who are right-sided have got this harmana who is nothing but a child. He is very anxious, very anxious to do the work of Sri Rama. Now Sri Rama is a character, I would say, which is full of balance, absolutely. He is the benevolent king which Socrates has described. So he needed somebody with him all the time to do the work or to supply him or to help him, like a secretary you can call him. And Sri Hanumana was the one who was created for this purpose. Now Sri Rama was such a assistant. I mean you cannot have such a word for him. You can say he was such a servant of Sri Rama. Even the servants, you see, don't have that much of dedication for their master. You can say like a dog or a horse, but that also doesn't have such dedication for Sri Rama that by the time he grew up, he got no nine uh, siddhis, Navadha siddhis, nine siddhis he got. These siddhis are like this, that he could become big, he could become so heavy that nobody could lift him. He could become so sukshma that nobody could see him. He could become so subtle that nobody could see him. There are nine siddhis that he got. So a person who has got the right side too much in him, he controls him with these nine siddhis. Now, how will you control a man who is running very fast in his life? What he does is to control his movement. He makes him in such a way that he has to put down his speed. He makes his feet very heavy. Now he can't do that much. Or he makes his hands very heavy. So the person cannot work very much with his hands. So he can give a tremendous uh, kind of a lethargic heaviness to a person who is uh, a very right-sided person. He has got another siddhis which are very interesting is uh, that he can extend his, he doesn't have many weapons, he has only one gada in his hand. And he can extend his uh, tail to any extent and he can handle people with his tails. He does not have to use his hand. Sitting down here, he can put the tail around anywhere. If he wants, he can just make a mountain of his tail and sit on that. Like he has all these monkey tricks as you call them, you see. And all these things he has within himself is to control a person who is extremely right-sided to begin with. Then he can fly in the air. 
just uh, he doesn't have any wings but he can just fly in there. That means he can become so big that the amount of air he displaces has a much more weight than his own weight. Just the same principle Archimedes, if you know the Archimedes principle. That he becomes so big that his body starts floating in the air, like a boat, you see, you can call it. And he can fly in the air. And by flying in the air, uh, he can carry the message from one to another through the ether. Now the subtle of the ether that we have is under the command of Sri Hanumana. He is the one who controls or is the lord of this ether, the subtle of the ether, or say the causal of the ether, and through it it communicates. All the communications that you find, like we have within ourselves also of ductless glands, which a pituitary is using ductless glands, is through Hanumana's uh, movement. Because he can go into any rakar, he can go into a formless state. Also the communications, we know for this communication that we have, uh, maybe we can say that there's a, we have got a loudspeaker. But we have a television, we have got radios and all those things. Where we catch on to the ether, anything is all the blessings of Hanumana. When he caresses my feet, he pulls back his nails. He's so gentle, He's extremely gentle and very beautifully he caresses my feet. And I've seen him the way he handles everything is extremely gentle ways. So that's what I feel that now Germans are becoming very gentle in handling things, in handling people. This change is coming and I think is the blessing of Anumana on them. So may God bless you. Let us continue to meditate for a few minutes.
Let us now join our hands and thank Shamadaji. Thank you, Shamadaji, for all the love, all the blessings, all the forgiveness for being our mother and ultimately for giving us our self-realization. Thank you, Srimadhaji. Let us now raise our Kundalini and take Bandha. Thank you everyone for joining today's session. Wishing everyone a great day. Thank you.